Happy Sabbath. Did you see what's outside? An absolutely beautiful day. It makes you grateful. It makes us grateful to be here in the house of the Lord at his invitation. A special day set aside each week to come together and to support one another and love one another and to fellowship. It is such a blessing to know that he cares that much about us to have planned this before the earth was formed. So we are grateful. Uh, there is an omission from the bulletin, and that is the first reading of membership transfer for Kristen from Downers Grove, I believe, to here. We did receive the fact that they are willing to give her up, and uh, we'll decide next week whether we're willing to receive her. But uh, this is the first reading, so uh, we'll note that and try and get it in the bulletin next week. The 2 o'clock class tomorrow will take place, and prayer meeting at 7 o'clock on uh, Tuesday, <coughs> and... Tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 will be the craft class, so bear that in mind. <clears throat> Board meeting, well, business, business meeting and elders meeting will be on Thursday. You are all invited to participate in that, in the running of the church, making decisions. Uh, it's something you have a right to do. And we welcome the input of one another. So a church social is planned, cooking class on the 16th. So we have a number of things going on. But most of all, we want to welcome you on a beautiful Sabbath day to the Lord's house where he is in our midst. And the vacant seats are not vacant because he sends his angels and his Holy Spirit to be among us. We're grateful that you've chosen to be here today and pray that you'll receive a rich blessing as we look forward to this time together with our Lord and Savior.
Father, we would pray for your presence to come among us in a special way, to bring the richness of the blessings that you intended for this day. May we find the fellowship so sweet. May we return again to your house. Lord, grant us to the full measure of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn, number 620, On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye. You may be seated. We have now come to the point where we bring before the Lord our praises and our prayer requests. And so I'll go ahead and read off these that have already been mentioned. But Brenda was just uh, in particularly thankful for uh, last Sabbath during Sabbath school, there was a, a text that was brought up and there was some discussion and uh, she's thankful that uh, Peggy was able to 
do some looking into it as well. And so we're just thankful for God's Word and how it can kind of uh, just help expand our minds a little bit. She would also request prayer for her daughter Jolene and also uh, George and Karen, just some individuals that are going through some uh, health issues and some different things, uh, just people to remember in prayer. Uh, also, too, we want to remember uh, Barbara. Uh, she uh, became uh, ill with uh, bronchitis, but uh, she's feeling, uh, or hopefully she's feeling better now, but just prayers for Barbara. Uh, Ed and Cindy, uh, praise the Lord, uh, they lost water uh, this week, but we're able to uh, get that back, so uh, we can all appreciate when we get our water back after losing it. <laughs> which leads into our, our next praise. Uh, just thankful for uh, Jonathan's help with that situation. Also, praise the Lord to see you here, Jonathan. Glad to have you with us. Uh, told you or uh, pulled a muscle in your back, I think, uh, this week. And so kind of messed up, but we're glad that despite being messed up uh, with your back that you're here today with us. So good to see you, and we're continuing to pray for you. Someone else we just uh, want to continue to uplift in prayer is our brother Dale. Also, to uh, a co-worker of, of ours, my, myself and Ed, uh, Randy, uh, his mom's been having some heart issues, so we keep her in prayer. Uh, Christy, which is the neighbor of Rita, uh, still looking to have a, a liver transplant done, so we pray for that. Continued prayers for Sherry's recovery. Continued prayers for... Gail's recovery, but we're glad to see Gail here with us today. Uh, continued prayers for my mom, uh, prayers for our church, our community. We remember the Carp Lake Church. Uh, prayers for, of course, those involved with Carp Lake, which is uh, Joe, uh, who has been uh, dealing with, uh, with cancer and with, uh, with a bad heart. And then also to Dan and Julia Dreyer. Uh, we also want to just keep them and their, their family in prayer. We continue to keep uh, Lori in prayer. We pray for uh, Patty and Alex. We're glad, Patty, that you're here today. And then also we uh, continue prayers for uh, Tony. Uh, we were hoping we might see uh, Tony today, but it sounds like she uh, she got sick and is not here today. But we continue to keep Tony in prayer as well as her son, Orion. So those are the things that I have as of right now. Uh, anything that anyone else wants to add to our prayer list? Andy? So Andy would just like continue prayers for Brandon and his uncle. I'd like to praise the Lord to see Linda and Sean here today. Good to have you with us. So it's nice to have Linda and Sean with us today. Uh, other things that we want to remember? Andy. Sure, sure. So Andy would just like prayer for the Lord's will to be done at work as he looks at maybe trying something different at the store. So uh, it's always good to, I guess, try something new. It leads to adventures and whatnot. So uh, others? Yes, Katie. Yeah. So praising the Lord that uh, January had a good birthday. And then also uh, continue prayers for uh, Steve. Any others anyone has? Uh, we also uh, are thankful that our, our old friends Frank and Mimi are back. 
but they are traveling to North Dakota. So just prayers for safe travels for you guys as you continue to make your way there. All right. Well, if there's no more to add, we'll go ahead and sing 671, and then we'll uh, kneel for prayer. Dear Lord, we just want to join in with Brenda. She's thankful for your word, and thank you for helping her get understanding and continue to help her to learn. We also uplift to you her daughter Jolene that's dealing with some serious health issues right now. We also would pray for George and Karen and the issues there. We think of Barbara who had bronchitis. We hope that she's doing better now. We're thankful for how you provided for Ed and Cindy and getting their water back. Also thankful for Jonathan's help with that and continue to help Jonathan and especially as he's pulled uh, muscles in his back and just help him to recover there. We pray for Dale. We know that he's going through a lot right now. We ask that you would give him spiritual discernment that he needs to know uh, which way he should go and the decisions that he should make. We pray for Randy's mom and we know that she's struggling with heart issues right now. Be with Christy that she could have a liver transplant done. Continue to be with Sherry and her recovery from her kidney transplant. Be with Gail. We're just so thankful that she's here and help her to continue to improve in her health. We pray for my mom. Be with her uh, physical and spiritual health as well and give her encouragement. We think of our church. We know that we have meetings coming up here very soon. We pray that you would help us to be prepared for that. And part of that is reaching out to our community, so we ask that you would bless those efforts as well. Continue to be with the Carp Lake Church and their prosperity and help them to grow as well. Be with uh, Joe, our brother that's there, help him with his health issues, and also be with Dan and Julia and their family. We pray for Lori, that you would continue to give her guidance and direction in her life and help her along. We pray for Patty. We're glad that she's here today and also be with Alex as well. We think of Tony. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today. May your spirit continue to work in her life. And be with her son, Orion, as well. We ask that you be with Nick and Andy's brother, Brandon, and their uncle. We're thankful to see Linda and Sean here. We pray that you would continue to work in their lives. Be with Andy. Give him guidance and direction at work. We're thankful for January having a nice birthday. We pray that your spirit we continue to look after and work upon Steve's heart. And we also think of Frank and Mimi, who are going to be traveling to North Dakota. Give them safe travels as well. In all of these matters, we give them to you. And especially, Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit. Without the power of your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. So we ask that that would be something that all of us here in our personal lives would strive to have more of each and every day. So in all these things, we pray for your will to be done. And be especially close to Ed, as he is your messenger today. Give him your words and your thoughts, and may we be receptive to it all. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. At this time, we will take up uh, the offering.
I always forget to memorize what the loose offering's for. But today, the loose offering goes towards our local combined budget. As you heard uh, an appeal made that our local combined budget could definitely uh, use help. So anything given towards that uh, is much appreciated. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our local church that we have here. Continue to uh, bless our funds, and also that you too would place a special blessing upon the tithes given also. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, we'll have the children's story, and uh, we'll take up uh, the lamb's offering, which, of course, goes to help the Sligers in Papua New Guinea. Good morning. Good morning. I think we all recognize that fellow there. But way back in well, decades ago, when they were going through uh, Dallas, Texas, when we all know what happened, it was a very sad day for the nation. And <clears throat> this guy that wrote this here uh, book, him and his wife were going through Dallas, and everybody was just walking around, you know, just as if nothing has ever happened there. And but they remembered th that day as they were going through D Dallas and going down a certain street, and they um, got up on the sidewalk and up ahead a little bit. They seen something and they got up there and there was a big X. And that big X marked the exact spot where our president had been shot. And it's sin that causes all this. And it's everybody has a problem with sin. And there's no cure for it unless we take it to Jesus and ask him to cure us of our sin. And we need to just rely on him every day because sin is a bad sickness. And we want to <clears throat> keep sin out of our lives and just do, do what we can to uh, pro progress in what we're doing. So let's remember every day to ask God to forgive us of our sins. And we get up in the morning, ask him to fill, it, fill you with the Holy Spirit and ask the devil to, to take the devil away. And God will help you through all your trials. Amen. 
Uh, I'd invite you now, if you'd like, to open up your Bibles, and we're going to look at Psalms 46, Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. We moved here 10 years ago, <clears throat> almost, hoping for a slower life. But it seems that no matter where you are, life moves along at a pace that almost causes you to need to catch your breath from time to time. Our scripture reading this morning says, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes when we are still, we can hear things that we miss. And knowing that he is God, that he will be exalted among nations, that should encourage us because we're his children. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Father, we are grateful that you have brought us to this place. We are grateful that we can open your word and know that you are indeed our God, our Savior, and our provider in all circumstances. Now, we would pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Last week, <clears throat> when the girls were here, uh, I'll be honest, I wanted to bring them to prayer meeting to show them off. And the pastor, in accommodating them, rather than Isaiah, which we are doing, which can get a little needy sometimes back and forth, he went to the book of Joshua. And we did chapter one there in our regular style, reading and things. The girls read verses, we all read verses. That's the way we do prayer meeting. And then we talked and discussed. Well, I kept reading and found that it was a story that while we know it, and there's even a song, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. There's so much more to this story that I thought today we would invite you to open your Bibles to the second chapter of Joshua. And together we'll read Joshua 2. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out the Sh of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came to a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Now, I think that we need to look at that verse. When we read that verse, we have a picture of Rahab's profession. I would like to do a little speculating where it says that they came to Rahab's house and lodged there. I would like to speculate, I have nothing on which to base this, but I would like to speculate that Rahab may have had a side hobby, but I think her house was more like a hotel. Because we certainly wouldn't find leading men of Israel going to a harlot's house. So I think that, I want to think that Rahab's house was not only 
one of those places, but it was also a hotel. And that's the reason they chose to go there and lodge there. <clears throat> and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out our country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thy house, for they be come to search out all the country. The king heard that spies came to assess their land. And he wasn't happy about this. He certainly did not want the news of their riches and their wealth and the outlay of their town and their security revealed to Israel because the history of Israel's success in overcoming nations which appeared in their way was amazing. And they had heard of it as well. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I was not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I want not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Somewhere... I heard something, thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh-oh. I think Rahab lied. Are we going to let her off the hook? Well, let's go on with our story. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof. So the stalks of flax were laid orderly on the top of the roof, drying. And these two spies were stuck down in amongst them. And the men pursued after them the way of Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. They were not going to come back. They were not going to get out if they were still in town. But Rahab said, go after them. Chase after them. If you hurry, you can catch them. If they're that important to the king, go after them now. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. What is she saying? Your reputation has gone before you. The people of this city are terrified. The strong men are faint because of what they've heard. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings, the Amorites, that were on the other side of Jordan, Shion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any men because of you, for the Lord your God he is God in heaven, above and in the earth beneath. What a witness. What a testimony. Our lives have turned from one of victory and comfort to the fact that we are now terrified. Our strong men have no courage. And I recognize that your God is the God of heaven and earth. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, 
that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. This is quid pro quo. And that we shall, ye shall save alive my father and my mother, my brethren and my sisters, and all they have, and deliver us our lives from death. And the men answered and said, Our life for yours. If ye utter not, this our business. And it shall be when the Lord hath delivered us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. You are indeed kind to have lied for us, to send them on a wild goose chase. And because of that, we promise you, as long as you don't divulge the information that you know of our mission and our presence, we will honor you with kindness and save your life as well. And she let them down by cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, may ye go your way. So don't take the route directly back across the Jordan to your encampment. They'll find you, surely. But rather, go to the mountain and stay there three days. Let them realize that they found no wild geese, and they come home and tell the king that they have done their best, but somehow you escaped. Then you can go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land and shall bind this line of scarlet there, thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we shall be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. We are guaranteeing your safety of everyone within your house. But should someone decline to stay here, then it's on them. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came onto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land. Remember what she said? There is no courage left in our fighters. Your reputation has already left us defeated. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. God had indeed gone before them in battle and caused the impossible to be possible. Chapter 3, And Joshua rose early in the morning 
And they removed from Shittim and came to the Jordan. And he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, our, your God, in the priest of the Levites bearing it, then shall ye move from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. It is determined that a cubic is approximately the length from here to here. That's about a foot and a half. So 2,000 cubics, one and a half, 3,000 feet. All right, there's going to be a distance between the priests and the ark and you. <clears throat> and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord shall do wonders among you. Interesting, isn't it? Joshua telling the people that the Lord is prepared to do great things for them. See, they have not been privy to the information that these men brought back as to the condition of the hearts of the warriors of the city of Jericho. But Joshua knew. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Here the Lord is encouraging Joshua, promising him that as he had been with Moses, as Moses was indeed the leader, the faithful leader of the children of Israel, that he was going to bestow the same kind of blessings and honor upon Joshua. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, <clears throat> When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. Let's read that. Ye shall stand still in Jordan. You are going to get your feet wet. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Prezerites, the Geger... Yeah, those people, the Amorites and the Jebusites. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve men of the tribes of Israel out of every man or every tribe a man. Joshua checks, picks one man from each of the twelve tribes. <coughs> And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand upon a heap. At the moment that the priests step into the water, the water will stop. Does that sound like a story we've heard before? Interesting, isn't it? The children of Israel, on their flight from Egypt, had come to the Red Sea, and it appeared that they were about to be crushed by the Pharaoh's army. And the priest's feet touched the water, and it said they crossed on dry why, that's impossible. There are those who said, well, it was a windstorm that just came up. No, 
No, not when the Lord's involved. He can do anything he wants, whenever he wants. And he said, I'm going to stop the water that is above us from the water that is below us and let it flow on and I'll provide a heap, dry ground for you to cross on. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over the Jordan and the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people <clears throat> and as they that bear the ark were come unto the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for the Jordan overflowed all the banks all the time of harvest. So the Jordan had a habit of not only staying within its banks, but coming out of its bank. That the waters which came down from above, the flow of the water, the river Jordan, and rose up upon an heap very far from the city, Adam, that is, beside Zaratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Dry ground for them to pass over to the other side of the Jordan in pursuit of the dream which had been promised many years before. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. What a picture. These people who were here probably heard the story of the Dead Sea or the Red Sea and how they walked on dry land. But now they were experiencing the same kind of miracle that God had provided for their fathers. What a privilege. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua again, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. Remember, he'd already selected these men, one from each tribe. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Now, these were not stones to put in your pocket. These were stones that uh, were a little more than that because we're going to see something here. When Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man, Joshua said, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan and take up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder. All right. So these are fairly good-sized stones. According unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up the 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priest had bare the ark of the covenant stood and they are there unto this day for the priest which bear the ark of the 
stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the children, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and of the people hasted and passed over. So I believe that there was a recounting of the miracles that God had provided for the blessings that Moses had reiterated to them, the promises that had been made. And it came to pass when all the people were passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priest in the presence of the people and the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh passed over before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. So while this was going on and Joshua is reiterating the blessings that have followed the children of Israel, about 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord onto the battle to the plains of Jericho. So 40,000 warriors were among the children of Israel. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Here, once again, we encounter this word fear. The word that we associate with being afraid of, standing back and, oh, don't hurt me. No, 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 no. This was the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yeah, you know, this is the kind of hope, this is the kind of reverence that is required to be part of our lives in acknowledging the Lord's leading. And they feared Joshua as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. So they respected Joshua from this day on. After all, he was the commander now and the direct connection to the God of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of the Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up out of the Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up onto dry land, that the waters of the Jordan returned into their place, and flowed over all the banks as they did before. So as soon as the priest cleared the bed of the river, the water returned to its flow. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. What was the meaning of these twelve stones? It was a reminder to the children who would come later that God had delivered them. That he was delivering on the promise of a promised land which had been given to their fathers many years before. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones that they shall let their children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. The same kind of dry land that had allowed them to come over the Red Sea. God had done the impossible. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until ye were passed over. As the Lord also did the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we, came, we were gone over. And all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, and that ye might fear the Lord your God forever." Well, fear might be appropriate in this spot because if God can stop the water and then release it, you know, what happened to the uh, soldiers of the Pharaoh when God released the water? When you're on God's good side, good things happen. If you're on God's bad side, it's not so good. 
We go to chapter 5. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of the Jordan westward, And then all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until they were passed over, that their hearts melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. What did our scripture say? Be still and know that I am God. For the people of the world will come in awe of me. When we are God's children, great things will happen. At the time the Lord saith unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives. Now we're going into a little R-rated section. So anyone under the age of whatever, you know, that's... And circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Now we're going to lay out in detail the reason why this was necessary. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this was the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all men of war, died in the wilderness by the way. After they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. But all the people that were born in the wilderness. By the way. As they came forth out of Egypt. Them they had not circumcised. So for this period of time. None of the ritual circumcision had occurred. But God again labeling his people. Specifically again, is setting forth a symbol of his relationship. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. Remember when we first heard of Caleb and Joshua? Moses had sent spies into the land and they came back. I recall a picture as a child of two men carrying a pole with a cluster of grapes on it. It was indeed a land filled with milk and honey. But what was the report? Oh, the men are giants. We stand no chance against them. We can't do this. What was it that Joshua and Caleb said? We can do anything with God on our side. All these brave chickens died in the wilderness because they did not the word of the Lord. And their children whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised. For they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcision, all the people that they abode in their places in the camp until they were whole. Surgical procedures of any type cause you to slow down. And it takes a little while before you feel better. I think probably most of us here will attest to that. So the children of Israel are now waiting until it says they are made whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Wherefore, the name of this place is called Gilgal unto this day. The Lord is saying, this is the place, this is the time where we put away our past. We put away the failures. We put away the choices that we have made. And today we're moving forward, once again, consecrating ourselves as the children of the Lord. And they did eat 
of the old corn of the land on the morrow, after the Passover, unleavened cakes, and the parched corn of the selfsame day, and the manna ceased on the morning after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. God had provided them manna from heaven. You recall that there was dissatisfaction with God and they cried out for the meat of Egypt and they got quail, didn't they? Eat themselves sick. But God had provided still. But this was the time that that provision was no longer necessary because now they were in Canaan and they could eat of the land of Canaan, that land of milk and honey that they spies had said, it isn't going to work. Caleb and Joshua said, we can do anything with God on our side. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us? Or art thou for our adversaries? This was a warrior who encountered Joshua, and he asked the obvious question, Are you on our side or theirs? And what is the answer? And he said, Nay, but as a captain of the host of the Lord. What? As a captain of the host of the Lord. So Joshua is not leading this battle alone. He has been sent a heavenly messenger. Am I now come? And Joshua fell in his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith the Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Did we see this story before? Wasn't it Moses, the last great leader who came upon the burning bush in the presence of God as he was in his re-education period. And God said, take off your shoes. The ground on which you stand is holy ground. And so Joshua did as well. <clears throat> now, Jericho was straight shut up because the children of Israel... <laughs> None went out and none came in. With the children of Israel right there outside the walls within sight of our city, we are not taking a chance of cracking these gates. No one's coming in, no one's going out. While we are inside our city, we are secure. But if we let them in or if we go out, there is one thing certain. We're cowards at this point because we've heard about what their God does. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. What mighty men of valor? Their knees are shaking. They are terrified. They have heard all the stories of the victories of the Israelites coming across the way. And now they have seen, essentially, the stopping of the Jordan River. What a bunch of men of valor. Hmm. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thou shalt, thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark of seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpet. Now, six days, one time. Seventh day, seven times. I don't have an answer 
but somewhere in a seven-day period, if it is consecutive, you have a Sabbath. Again, I put forth the idea from my feeble mind that I have no belief that that seventh time was on the Sabbath day. Because I do not believe the Lord would order such a massacre on his Sabbath. And it shall come to pass that when they were make long blasts on the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall flat, and the people shall ascend every man straight before him. The battle plan is laid out at the time that you hear the word, there will be a shout, not before, but at that time, the walls will fall down and you will proceed into the city. The 40,000 warriors that they had chosen from the three tribes were to go out and to complete God's work. Every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets and ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, encompass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed on before the Lord, and blew the trumpet, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priest that blew the trumpet, and the rearward came after the Ark, and the priest going on, blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded to the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. Picture this. 40,000, I have this thing about Marines. But let's have 40,000 Marines march around the city. Not saying a word. The priest between them, one time. Can you imagine, you know, everybody is getting as close to the wall as they can and looking out and watching this happen. 40,000 men marching around the city silently except for the plop, plop, plop of their feet. That's what God said. That's what they did. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about at once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. So was day one. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, and the rearward came after the ark, and the Lord, the priest going on, blowing with the trumpet. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into their camp. So it was not completely silent. The horn, the ram horns were being blown by the priests, essentially attracting more attention to what was going on outside the city walls. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early. About the dawning of the day encompassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass that the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. 
Now they were to speak up. Now they were to proclaim that the Lord God was their deliverer. The people in the city have watched this happen for six days. They expected them to go back after the first time. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. They had an uneasy feeling when things were not as they had been before. The seventh time, the trumpets blow and the men shout. Well, let's read on. The city be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, and she and all that are with her in her house, because she did the messengers, she hid the messengers that were sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest ye make yourselves accursed. And when ye take the accursed things, ye make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Don't take anything from the city. Destroy it. It says, it goes on. It says, but all silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. And they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. Both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua said on to the two men that had spied about the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath. And as you swore to her, go keep your promise to Rahab. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire. And all that was therein, only the silver, the gold, and the vessels of brass and iron, they were put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even into this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set the gates of it. So there was to be no more Jericho. God had so declared. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, but God had given them the victory. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. We have read how the children of Israel's Adventures had preceded them throughout the countryside. How Rahab said, the people in our city have known your history. And we are in awe. Your God is the God of heaven and earth. She took her stand with the people of God. God is offering us the same chance today to take our stand with the people of God. We have been privileged 
to see the workings of God throughout the scripture. It is good for us, I believe, to take a moment to remember what God has done in the past. Because in the future, while we will not be taking cities and killing people, we will be relying on God to provide. And he will because he has promised. And the day is coming when you look around today in this world that we live in, what was it? A 7.2 or something earthquake in Taiwan? A 4.7 in New York or Jersey, wherever New York, Jersey, it's hard to tell between the two. But uh, yeah, signs, you know, in government, this is not the country we lived in 20 years ago. We were a country founded on God. Today we are a nation devoid of God. We have the opportunity to stand with God as his children. To see the victory. We will cross on dry land when God calls us to go home that final time. It is our opportunity to be with him for all eternity because of the gift that he gave on our behalf. Let's turn in our hymnals to our closing song, number 614. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high for the Lord. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on, stand firm everyone, set your heart upon this holy word. Rouse and soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Forward, forward, shout the loud hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Strong to meet the foe, marching on we go. While our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright, gleaming in the light. Battling for the right we ne'er can fail. Rouse and soldiers, rally round the banner. Ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout the loud hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Oh, the God of all. Hear us when we call, help us one and all, by thy grace. When the battle's done and the victory's won, may we wear the crown before thy face. Rouse and soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, Pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout the loud hosanna. Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Lord, we would take this opportunity to pledge our allegiance to you. To know, Lord, that you are faithful in your promises that the promised land is before us and that we will take it as a victory for you. We ask now that you would go with us from this place. May we be blessed and may we take the blessings with us to share with others with whom we come in contact. We ask these things now in the blessed name 
of the gift of the Lamb of God, that of Jesus Christ, who has brought us salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.